Hi guys. I've actually um, been doing a pretty long response to Jesus Freaks video point by point, but I have stopped in the middle and I let it rest for a few days because it was kind of lazy about it. It was taking really long to make and so on, so I just decided to let it rest for a few days and by the time I wanted to continue, I've noticed that there's been countless videos responding to this video and most of the points that I would make were actually addressed already. So instead I'll just respond to one single point that he makes in his video and respond to that. It's amazing how I listen to non-believers that are so ardent in their faith. Whenever calamity befalls them, they will cry out to God and blame Him. Or they will cry out to God and seek refuge in Him. Now, what's interesting is Christians do the same thing. Calamity falls on them and we blame God. But at least we are recognizing that there is God it's not a good thing to blame God. But I think an atheist, when they decide to blame God for their suffering, or to ask of God for his hand, I think we see that that gnawing internal desire to know God is being realized by the very non-believer themselves. You know, I don't know many people. I don't hear too many stories. I'm sure atheists have their little websites with their little links and such, but I don't hear many people truly dying on their deathbed saying, oh, I've lived my life for Christ for naught. I wish I'd have been more of a heathen. I just don't hear that nearly as much as we hear of stories of people saying, I wish I had not lived my life like a heathen. I wish I would have lived my life for Christ. I think that the deathbed is the true awakening for many people and unfortunately for them it's oftentimes much too late. What you're talking about is atheists that are trying to take advantage of Pascal's wager. Now Pascal's wager fails on many levels but the idea behind it is that it's logical to worship God whether he exists or not, because for the slight chance that he does exist, it's better if you worship him, because even if he doesn't exist, you have nothing to lose. So, doing it your entire life, worshiping and so on, that's not logical, because you're acting upon a slight chance, a statistical improbability. But doing it on your, beth on your deathbed, is is smart because you are using a get out of jail free card basically now ask me if I would do that probably not because I've been facing death several times in my life and not once have I ever turned to God I was more concerned about what's going on at the moment or trying to make the best of the last moments of my life now the thing is that it's hard to get into the psychology or mindset of people who are facing death because it becomes a lot more of an emotional state of consciousness than a logical thinking state of consciousness. So obviously this isn't saying much in favor of religion because all this is saying is that religion is an emotional state of mind rather than a logical and smart one. So, I don't blame these guys for trying to take advantage of Pascal's wager. I think that it's clever that they can use this get-out-of-jail-free card right before they die for the chance that they'll go to heaven. But, here's, what, here's where I think that your argument fails, Jesus Freak, because what they're doing is prayer and repentance without faith and belief. They don't believe in the God that they're praying and, and repenting to. They honestly believe that he doesn't exist. But they're doing it for the chance that they will go to heaven for merely praying and repenting without believing. And try to prove me wrong about this. Because I can guarantee you that 
every single atheist that is confident in his perspective, that is confident in his conclusions, and that he thinks that atheism is is the true way to to live. It, so. I don't think that they all of a sudden start believing in God simply because they're dying, but rather that they're trying to take advantage of this wager. They're trying to take advantage of their lottery ticket here for the slight chance that they'll win. It's like getting a free lottery ticket. So if you get a free lottery ticket, will you not fill it out? Of course you will, but I wouldn't spend money on one. So that's what they're doing their entire life they lived as an atheist which they are confident was not a mistake but on their deathbed they're trying to take advantage of the fact that prayer and repentance might just be enough for them to get into heaven so they're playing on that card so that's why I think your argument fails Jesus freak and you uh, you demonstrate that you obviously don't know how atheists see things, what the perspective of atheists is. Um, I really am confident in that I understand this about you. Um, you have a completely wrong idea about what atheism is, about how our mind works, how we see the world, life, death, and things. You are, I was pretty sure that you're open-minded, but you're kind of stuck in a bubble. You can't see things from another person's perspective, but rather you see them from your perspective and you put them in your shoes instead of you being in their shoes. Um, I hope you, you can actually work on this and trying to put yourself in, a, in an objective mindset and which allows you to understand other people rather than just making wild assumptions about them. So again, they're not starting to believe in God before they die because obviously their belief won't change simply because they're, they're about to die. But rather, they're just trying to um, take advantage of the fact that they might go to heaven if they just pray 